Hi everyone. Um, my aunt asked me if I could make her a pair of newborn overalls that she could give as a gift to somebody. And um, she wanted to pay me for this. So I thought I would bring you guys along on this journey to make these overalls. So I hope you guys like it. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to share. Thanks. Okay, now that I have notched these um, areas, forgot this one, it shows a triangle, but I'm just going to put a little snip on the double white. I do two snips, so there's one there, two here, one there. Now that I've done that, I'm going to mark the pockets, and for this, I'm going to use my transfer paper. I'm going to place this because it's right sides together. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way. With the right sides of the pocket facing together, I'm going to turn my tracing paper right sides out because I want to mark the, the right side of my pocket, not the wrong side. Because it's always easier to fold it when the outside is marked. So there I have my marking right there. I'm going to do that with both pockets. Okay. 
Now this one has a, uh, I mean, the marks on this pocket are the same size. The marks on this pocket are different. This one's a small one and this is a large one and they correspond to marks on another part of the um, pattern, on another pattern. So this is something I used to do all the time and it used to work really good, but I don't know if it's the paper I'm using, but it doesn't, I think the other one's more wax and this is more powder, I don't know, but it doesn't quite work as well as it used to. Yeah, it's not working for some reason. So I am going to try and do something here. So I'm going to put my thumb right where I want it. I know there's a better way to do this. I just don't know what it is, but whatever works, I suppose. Now you can see on this one it marked, but not the bottom one. So I'll just try to do this here. I'll make this one really big. <laughs> so I know that was a smaller one. So we'll see how that works out. Now the first part of the sewing is going to be the center front and center back. So I'm going to get my serger up here because I have a, a two needle serger and I can sew and serge at the same time. Now if you want you can serge each piece individually then sew it and then you can press them open or you could serge them together and press them one way and i'm going to serge them together and press them one way when i mentioned that i wanted to um serge the sides or the center front and center back together um I was going to explain why, but I had briefly forgotten why I chose that. Um, I'm going to be doing some top stitching and I feel like um, it would look better to do the top stitching on one side rather than um, on both sides. Because there's, I kind of go back and forth on this because I like the way it looks when you separate the seams and then you top stitch each side down and then I look at how that center front or center back is being held together just by the stitching. And sometimes if it's too flat or if the stitches are too loose, you'll actually see through the garment. So I just want to make sure that um, I can, when you serge the pieces together and you fold it over, you have the strength of also that top stitching. So that's why I chose to do it this way. To save on time, I will only be top stitching, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, serging center front, center back, and the side seams. I don't serge around everything because those seam edges or those fabric edges will be encased in um, the binding or the hem or whatever. Okay, I'm going to take these to the ironing board and press them out. Okay, so the last you saw me doing was the uh, center front, center back seams. And I didn't record the, the rest of it because it was um, very detailed and I just wanted all my concentration to be on that and not on the camera, making sure that it was in focus um, and that everything was 
right with the recording. So I just want to show you where I'm at. I put the back pockets on, did the top stitching, did the top stitching front, center front and center back. Um, I got the pocket on, did the top stitching here. Um, I did the straps and everything turned out really good. There's This got off a little bit. I'm not going to redo it because unless you're really focusing on it, you're not going to notice and I'm not going to drive myself nuts doing it. So I'm looking at, okay, it looks good and the quality of the construction is there. So I'm not going to worry about any of that and we'll just move on from here. Um, this is what the inside looks like. Um, now I need to do this facing and I'll have to sew it here. Now this was supposed to be on a fold, but um, I didn't have the fabric to do it on a fold. So I'm going to do a seam here. And then I left about a quarter of an inch right here. So it'll just be a seam there and then it gets sewn to these straps here. So um, from here on out, I'll just go ahead and record the rest of it. Okay, I don't know if I am going to serge the outer edge or tuck it under when I sew this to the overalls. I really want to tuck it under, but because it's denim, it might create too much of a ridge and I don't want that either. So um, after this, I'm going up to some family's house for dinner. It's Labor Day today and hopefully I can make the decision when I'm there and then when I get back, hopefully I'll make up my mind. Now this is where I showed you that this was supposed to be laid out on the fold and I didn't have enough fabric. So I'm having to um, extend it out and then sew where the fold would be. Okay, I'm going to take this to my ironing board and press this open and then I'll leave for dinner and hopefully by the time I get back, I will have made up my mind on what I want to do. Okay, um, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and serge this edge on here instead of folding it under. Um, but first I need to do the right sides together and serge the sides and put this whole thing together. Okay, so I sewed the side seams together and I'm going to top stitch these 
And I did make a mistake on here, and that is, I think, because one pocket you're supposed to cut one, and the other pocket you're supposed to cut two, but because I didn't want to fuss with all that, I cut two from both. And I think this was actually supposed to be the front pocket. And I think this is supposed to be the back pocket. It's really, the only real difference is um, this one is a little more narrow than this. So I don't really, it's, I'm not bothered by it. It would have just been a little more narrow. Um, and maybe that would have had an effect on if I wanted to top stitch here. I'm going to top, top stitch the sides, but this top stitching will be on the side of the front panel, not the back. Because I thought it would look kind of funny if I had this here and then top stitching right here, just like kind of close. And when I feel the top stitching of my jeans, at least on the inseam, the seams are pressed towards the front. So I'm just gonna do that on the out seam. I don't know if there's any real hard rules about that. So I press the seam allowance to the front and then I'll top stitch here. And I think that's the last of the top stitching. I don't wanna overdo it. But right now, um, I'm going to uh, figure this part out this is what this is the kind of thing that gets me because when you have all these curves and and the way they put this together is different than I've ever had I've ever seen so it goes like this so you sew this these seams together here which why are they so far off I will have to figure that out I might have sewn I might have traced this pattern differently I'll have to figure it out and then once that's done, then you flip it like this. It goes down like this, so it's kind of self-facing. And then this gets sewn like this. So the front is a self-facing fabric. But I think I need to get off camera and figure out why this is wider than this. Or I veered off and traced a different size on the strap. I will figure that out and then I'll come back and we'll get it done. Okay, I was gonna fix this um, off camera, but first <laughs> I just wanna show you, this is not my mistake. Um, this is the pattern piece that I'm using. Now I traced everything onto different paper because um, I have another one to make and I don't wanna have to trim off my original pattern. So I just make a different size. So this is piece six here. And then this right here is the facing, which is this. And I want to show you how this is supposed to fit on the newborn here. So the newborn is down here across and comes here. So if you align these up, this right here says newborn size. If you align this line with the top of the newborn, you still have all this down here. So I don't know why it's like that, but I will have to figure out how I'm going to fix it. I think it would actually go like that. So down at the bottom fits but you look here, there's the top of the strap and there's the top of that. And so that's the original pattern. And then I cut this here and I made it the correct size. So pattern's a problem, unless there's something I'm missing because here it shows that it matches up and that it's not gonna be a half inch difference, so. If you guys see something that I don't see, let me know. Um, so yeah, I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm going to do the top stitching on the overalls. Um, and I want to explain something to you guys. And I learned this in my fine dressmaking class years ago. Um, 
I have not found a source for top stitching thread that covers all the colors. So what you could do is what I did. Now, first of all, let me just say, I live in a super teeny tiny place. I My square footage is 288, so there's a lot of mess because I have a lot of stuff. And if you're a seamstress, you know what I'm talking about. So um, I try to hide all the extras around me. So if you guys happen to see it, that's why I just live in a super teeny tiny place. Okay, so if you want to do top stitching and you don't have top stitching thread, you can double your threads like this. I I spun some of this off the spool onto a bobbin and then I ran it through my machine as one, just grab them together, and I run them through a top stitching needle so they both go through the same eye of the same needle and then it just makes it thicker. And this is what it looks like. These are two threads going through the same top stitching needle and then um, it's the color of the fabric that I'm going to make the jacket out of which is the color of this pocket and I just doubled it up ran it through there and the back the bobbin needle is like a gray because that's what the inside of my jumper is so I'm going to push the seam allowance over to the front side of the jumper now they have guides for this but I'm not using a guide. What I do is I align my seam. I don't think you can see it in the camera. Let me see if I can do a zoom in. I try to keep my seam right here just to the inside of this little toe here. That's how I do mine. Sorry if the camera moves. I am going to be working on trying to stabilize my table. I just got some new um, belt sander, belt sanding sandpaper, and I think I'm going to refinish the whole top and then try to strengthen the legs. When you're doing your top stitching, um, you might want to just slow it down to make sure every stitch is where you want it, especially since it's going to be seen. And I forgot to say that when I lengthened my stitch for the top stitching, Instead of two and a half, I did it to three. I didn't want it to be really big, but I think doubling your threads and lengthening the the thread, the stitch length just a little bit um, makes for a really nice top stitching. Um, I finished the top stitching. I'm sorry about the lighting. It's I need to make curtains for my window so the light doesn't come through the um, the uh, blinds like that. But um, I have the facing pinned on, and I decided to match up the area that goes with the um, that lines the underarm seam, so I don't have to trim any of that. I'll just trim off this area if I even decide to do that. We'll see. But um, I want to get this marked. I have three machines I'm using and it's just really rough having to switch them around between recordings, serger, top stitcher, regular machine. And so I'm going to try and get these all done so I can just jump right over to the next sewing thing. I can sew that and I can sew this without having to pull everything again. So this is where I need to fold up one and a quarter inches and this is the hem. I 
I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the chalk chalk or the disappearing chalk. So I decided to go with this so that when I press it up, I'll still have it if I need it. We'll see if that's a good decision after all. <laughs> The only downfall to this is I have to turn it over and remeasure everything on the other leg, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. Okay, that doesn't look right. Double check the length of that. Yeah, that needs to come up a little bit. Maybe I should have used the wax. <laughs> you know what? I don't think you can see the chalk line. So I am going to use the wax and hopefully that will show up a little better. Okay. Now this is, like I said, the one and a quarter inch. Now we're going to mark just a quarter inch up from the edge or the bottom of the fabric. Um, this will be, this is your new length and when you fold this up you're going to have to tuck this under. So that's all that we're marking right now. And when you're finished with one side, then you can just move over to the other. I know this is not a how-to tutorial, but these are techniques that I will point out that just make things a little easier. So we did this side, just flip it over and do the other side. Okay, now that I marked the hems, I'm going to sew the facing on and then I'm going to the ironing board to press the seams that I'm sewing right now and then press the hem up and then I'll come back and sew the hem. Now this is how far off these straps are and this really makes me uh, doubt myself um, because you want to think that these things are perfect and they're not perfect. Um, these are people doing, you know, drafting these patterns whether it's on um, a computer or by hand and just nobody's perfect. So. Sometimes it works out like this. So let me know though, if you have experience in sewing, is, is this something that you've seen before? Because I'm gonna settle it the way I think is the best way to do it. Some people might be more technical. I would just cut it off. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, I'm going to the ironing board. I'm going to press this and then press the hems up right here. And then I'll come back and hem this. Okay, so I got my hem pressed up and I'm going to tuck this under and start sewing. And the reason why I'm hemming it now before closing the inseam is because the inseam is going to have the snap tape.
Okay, and then I'm going to do this on the other leg. Now, um, you're going to see right here, you see a little rippling. That's because there is stretch in this denim. But when I finish hemming the pants and I go and steam them, it'll work all that out. Okay, um, I have the pants hemmed. I have the facing on and now we're going to figure out how all of this works. So let me go right side out first. I didn't think about it until after I hem the pants. I should top stitch that. So that's something I'll do later. So the first thing I'm going to do as you see I have the facing on. I'm going to match the side seams of the jumper to the uh, side seams of the facing. I'm just going to pin those in place. And I'm going to align the seam with the seam, not the seam with the um, top stitching. Now I'm going to be a little um, uncomfortable doing this top part right here because um, this is stretch denim. So I'm not sure if I should do a fusible interfacing here just to stabilize it. I might do that. As soon as I pin it, I'm going to press it and then I'll know where to put it. So we'll see how that goes. So if this is going to go like this, then I need to put my label in. I really should have sewn it in before, but I'll just pin it with the facing. So if this is going to go like this, then the label needs to be like this. So I got the label pinned in. I think I got it right. Okay. I went through all my uh, scraps and I found I found a piece of fusible interfacing and it was just one that I cut out for a cuff. And decided not to use it because this was more um, mid to heavy weight and the fabric I was working for the shirt is um, uh, lightweight. So I cut out a strip and I'm just going to iron it right here because even though this is denim, I don't want the interfacing to be too thick up there. It seems I do this more and more now. <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera on when I um, sewed the facing on. So this is where uh, I ironed the inner facing and sewed all the way around it. Now I'm going to push these out really well and give this a good press. And when I come back and I start recording, I am just going to not do any more talking um, I feel like it's just a distraction when I'm trying to get the work done and then I forget <laughs> um, to turn the camera on. So I am going to get my scissors and trim this and then surge it up and then just finish the jumper or the overalls. And I may not do much talking. If I do, it will be um, during the time that I sew the snap tape on.
Okay, this is the last part of these overalls. Um, so the pattern uh, calls for putting the button on the strap and the buttonhole here. But I don't like that and I called my aunt and she agreed with me that we want to do it this way. And one of the reasons I didn't like it, for some reason it bothers me to have the button on the strap. Don't know why. But because we're using these denim buttons, it just seemed like the button should be on the bib, not on the strap. So this is where we're at now and I need to um, mark this. for button placement. So that's where the button needs to go. And I'm just going to do it on this one as well, if I can find the right pin. and then we'll compare it, the placements. That looks right. So that's where those will go. I really don't want to have to punch a hole. I cut a hole in here. I would rather just try to force this pin in. We'll see how that's going to work because I also forgot I also have the interfacing in there that I will have to push all of this through. I had to take it outside because my table is not sturdy enough to give it all the good wax that it needed. So that turned out cute. It was pretty easy. And then I'm going to put the buttonholes here and it'll be done. So, oh, you know what? No, I, I have to go back and hand stitch this again. When I put the snap tape in, and you guys saw me tack these down because this didn't match up real well I had to take everything out and redo everything so I had to redo that now I'm going to hand stitch those again but first let me get those buttonholes in